This conference will now be recorded. Um, so we've just finished prayer and we are going to be working with Ephesians 2.18 today. But I have something on my heart before we get started that I really want to share with people. And that is, I get prayers, I, I get people telling me every once in a while, well, I'm going to pray for your safety. I'm going to pray that everything will turn out right. I'm going to pray that, you know, brothers and sisters, I would love those prayers. Those mm -hmm. prayers are dear to me. But those prayers, you know what? We're going into end time events here. Mm -hmm. The only safety we have is in the hand of our King Jesus. Mm -hmm. We are going to go through rough waters, guaranteed. It's coming. We are going to go through some hard, hard times. Some of us on this call may not even be able to call into this call anymore. Why? Because our life will be taken from us. But praise the Lord, the safety that we can have is in the palm of his hands, and he who promised is faithful. Let's be serious about what's happening here, though. What is happening is going to cause great trouble for many. It's not a Disneyland experience that we're going through. We are going to go through some hard, hard times. But we have a master who can equip us. That's what we need to pray for, is that he continues to equip us for being able to move forward and get his message out. We are his ambassadors. This is not heaven. This is not a dress or rehearsal. We are going through literal hell. But please, God, he is able to carry us through, period. So pray for your, pray for my being able to be equipped to move forward. And if in some way this Ephesian uh, uh, study can help in that equipping, praise God. Amen. That's where our money needs to be. He will take us home. On that note. Let's move to Ephesians 2.18. Ephesians 2.18. Somebody have that for me in anything other than King James. Rosie, do you have that one for me? I okay. have it. Yeah, go ahead, Rosie. In, in uh, New Living or something like that? It's the Amplified Bible. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, for it is through him that we both, whether far off or near, now have an introduction accessed by one Holy Spirit to the Father so that we are able to approach him. Mm, 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 mm. Somebody else have another ver uh, version for me? Come on, guys. What's that? What's that? Hello. Boniface, you have something there for me? Yes, from ESB. Go ahead. For through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's go to Ephesians 2, 13 through 18. This is the last piece of the entire segment here. Who wants to read King James Version? Ephesians 2, 13 through 18. Who's got that for me? I have it. I've got King James. I have it. What's that? Uh, Bonnie. John. Bonnie. Go ahead, Bonnie. Go for it, John. Go. Well, Bonnie. Go ahead, Bonnie. <laughs> okay. oh. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, or to make in himself one new man, so making peace. 
and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body of the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you, which were far afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. All right. Let's see if I can say this right this time. John, you keep me on track for this. Uh, <laughs> How many words appear more than once? And that's just in 18. Just in verse 18, King James Version. None. Yeah, that's pretty much the way I see it. Right. So, all right, that part was easy. What about segmenting this? Who's going to... Segment this out for me. Five. Okay, tell me how that's five. Through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Okay, interesting. Anyone I got else? The same thing. All right, thank you, I Michelle. Got, yeah. Anyone else have any other thought process on this? I would say five. Okay. Well, so far that's three people saying five. I have to tell you, I only got four out of it. But you know, I just uh, said let me share mine. Oh, let me share mine. For through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. That's how I so would have read. That's yeah. You know, that's where I saw it. But yeah, that's the beautiful thing of massaging scripture. All right. Anybody else have any other thought? All right. Let me go ahead and go forward to the definitions. There's two definitions today: through and access. I found I found that through gave a whole lot more than what I really thought it should um, or would, maybe. Um, this comes from the Iger Apps Bible Concordance and Strong's Offline. Through, a primary preposition denoting the channel of an act through in very wide applications, uh, local, casual, or occasional, in composition. It retains the same general import after always a month at to avoid because of that briefly by for cause uh, for from in by occasion of by reason of forsake that thereby therefore x though through throughout to wherefore with within in composition it retains the same general import occurs 666 times, 67 times, I'm sorry, uh, in 580 KJV verses. 241 times equals by, 88 times equals through, 16 times equals with, 58 times equals for, 47 times equals uh, for, say, for like in forsake, 44 times equals therefore, 14 times equals for this cause, 52 times equals because. So for through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. That through, just looking at it, uh, I would pretty much put that down as for this cause. Um, out of all the ones given there. Um, it could be because too. For because, well, for this cause, through him, we both, yeah, for this cause really fits best in my opinion. Any other thoughts before we move further forward? Yeah, it's uh, quite often it says, uh, through the spirit, through the spirit. In other words, there are m so many things that we're uh, capable of only through the spirit. 
And it was interesting where you said through also meant channel of an act. So it's like the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit means uh, a catalyst by which we can accomplish certain things. And uh, we're just, uh, Bonnie's uh, reading through and um, putting on uh, uh, Facebook some things out of the book. What's the book called by Ron? Um, Adventism's Greatest Need. Yeah, by Ron Cluse. Amazing book. And it's really making it so plain about through the spirit, the necessity of the spirit to accomplish so much that we have to accomplish in these days, mm. especially as we are at the end of time. I think we're at the end of the end of the time. Mm -hmm. Yes, we've entered yeah. into where Daniel says um, uh, at the last end of their uh, kingdom, we have entered into that time where this worldwide kingdom has got a hold it has never had before. Yep. And uh, yeah, we've we've entered there. So, Honor, so I see this word. Go ahead, Mark. Hello. Yes, Mark. Yeah, I see this word as putting it as, um, you might say a, a route or a um channel I, I mean it really makes me think of a pipe kind of and so if if you were to picture jesus as the pipe then we have to go through him it's what he's what's carrying us to the father he's what's um the the mechanism of being able to accomplish this okay mm -hmm. that's kind of how i'm i'm seeing that but Yep. Yeah, the Thank through, you for through, yeah, through the spirit. I, I see what you're saying, like, like a, a pipe. It's it's through that that we are able, through the spirit, to even have access to the Father and to Christ. Amen. If it says through him, I guess I was perceiving that it's through Christ, but like in verse 13, in Christ Jesus. We're going to get into that more as we get going here, Mark. Any Anyone else have any thoughts here before we continue forward? All right. Let's go into the who, what, where, when, why. This is exactly when we'll get into that, Mark. Uh, oh, you're going to read the access to right? What's that? You were going to read the definition of access to, I believe, right? Oh, I can do that. Um, it was very short on that one. Admission occurs three times in three KJV verses. Three times equals access. Okay, what was the original okay. explanation or definition? That was the de uh, definition from the Apps by uh, Igor Apps Bible Concordance and Strong's Offline. Right. What, what What was the first thing? What was the first thing that access definition said? Admission. Admission. Mm -hmm. Access. Sort of like getting admission. Mm -hmm. Kind of like you, you got the ticket. Admission. Okay. Interesting. All right. So if you put those two words together through and admission, are those kind of synonyms? Well, I've never been good, really that good on that. Um, somebody else want to take that? I don't think anybody's think touching that. I think the access is the result of the three. Just like right. just like my pipe illustration, you get the you get water through the pipe and it ends up in a location because it went through there. So the access is being able to get into that location. Or in this case, right. so much better than that. God. And, and admission well, re references um, authority or 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 um, an allowance. Well, it can also represent the beginning of something. When you're admitted somewhere, then that is an opening. Yeah. That is an entrance. Like my friend, yeah, that, she was that's... admitted to the uh, to the academy, to the high school, to whatever. Right. And so if you're ad if you're granted admission 
then you can then go through, you can then enter something. Right, that's what admission, that's the point I was trying to identify is that the admission means that there was something granted that you were denied until admission was allowed. Okay. So, so if you put that with the word through, were we denied that until he died on the cross? Is that, if you carry that further, could you say that? Well, we've That's always had it. We, we, I'll jump in on that one. We've always had it um, because otherwise uh, patriarchs like Abraham, Moses, and whatnot wouldn't have hope. They had hope. Um, but the problem is the same problem we have today. We choose not to receive it. Amen. That's that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my thought on that is um, um, having access to the Holy Spirit. It, it, the Bible makes it very plain. It, it is different now than before the cross. Mm -hmm. It makes it very. Oh, it, I, it, I agree it, with that. I do agree with it, that. Yeah, hid from ages past. So when the Lord wanted to speak to his people, he would speak to his prophet. And then the prophet was responsible to take the message to everybody out there. Where now, after the cross, he took down that wall. And now all people, every human on this earth, has the same access the prophets had before through the gifts of the Spirit. Yeah. You know, Patty, I like that, but I couldn't help but thinking when you were talking about how it was all, he also talked through a donkey. I just kind of had to laugh at that. And he said the stones will cry out. <laughs> you know, if you don't want to pray for them. So it's like, yes, he did speak through prophets, but also he spoke through dreams to other people. He spoke um, in person to Mary. So prophets was one of the main ways that he spoke. But also he spoke uh, to other people. You know, you can think about when he spoke to Moses. Um, did that sound like a burning bush to Moses when he spoke? Well, maybe not. But, you know, there's other ways that I'd like to have heard that donkey speak, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think we will one day. The donkey. Oh, oh I, the I, donkey. I, oh, yes. <laughs> I, I think we will one day because I think there there was communication, especially if we go back even to the serpent. There was communication that we had with the animals that we do not have now. Yeah. All right. Let's go into the who, what, where, when, and why. What's the who here? Him. Okay, so him who? Jesus, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I knew you'd like we that. We got all though. three of them. Yeah, we, we got do. all three of them. We do. We got him as in Jesus, and we've got the God the Father, and then we have the Spirit. One, well, yeah, absolutely. So, would, would the Spirit be considered a who? Well, yeah. it, it it's a yeah. reference point to an entity of some sort. Just like him is a reference point to an entity of some sort. We can identify that the him is Jesus Christ by reading and studying through the, the other verses. But just seeing him in a sentence, we know it's a reference point to an entity of some sort. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, a, one, person, a person of the Godhead, one of the Godhead, yeah. So there's three persons of the Godhead, three persons of the heavenly trio. And, uh, so I, I had this to write about the one spirit because that's yet another who was we identified. Jesus Christ, please, uh, uh, let's see, this is not a reference. Okay, so this is what I wrote back a little while ago, and I'm, you know, I'm willing to challenge it. This, this is not a reference point in this case to the Holy Spirit, but rather a direct reference to the spirit of Jesus, which happens to be holy. Now. I, I I am certain some people's gonna some people are gonna have something else to say on that. We already have, but is every time that the here's the question I have is every time the 
spirit is mentioned in the Bible, a reference to the third person no. or is that is that true every time? I don't think no. it is. Yeah. No, no, no. Because not. when it's no. a little s, it's talking about the human spirit, like creating me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. So there's a lot of references to spirit that's even, you know, and of course, sometimes it's the spirit of God, sometimes the spirit of Christ, but also sometimes it is the, the Holy Spirit himself, the I third agree. person of the Godhead. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Now, yeah, I see what I, yeah, me too. That's what Go I was ahead, kind of alluding to. Yeah, I was alluding to that as far as the spirit, because the one is in us, then it is part of us, too. So we right. would also be the who. There and we go. Spirit, so we might. Spirit can be also. Yeah, we might add too, into that. Maybe, maybe a bad spirit too, you know. Well, you can. I don't. I don't think yeah, we have reference to that in this verse. Okay, so we got lots of people here. Mark, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Um, somebody was mentioning that you can based on whether it's a capital or not, and I just wanted to point out that. That we'd have to go by context a little bit more because the capital is added by translators based on their opinion. So we think, okay, this is probably a proper term, but um, we could dig into it further than that and see. Mm -hmm. Very good point. Very good well, point. The, Kyle? The well, was, talks, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Kyle? Yeah. The question so. was. Hang on a second, Paula. Twyla. Oh, I'm sorry. Hang on a second. Kyle? Um, I was noticing that he was saying through them uh, the two would have access by one spirit, so it seems as if it would be more of a unity type thing that they would come into one because it was two, I guess it was two separate, the, the near and the far, which is one verse before, Very but mm -hmm. he's kind of trying to say, like, now you both will have to come unto the Father through Christ, which is one in one spirit. I like that. like that. Very, very good job, Kyle. Twyla. Yeah, that was uh, that was a good uh, interpretation of that. But the question was, the spirit always referred to that, and so I was just trying to answer that. There's other spirits like. Uh, angels are ministering spirits and what Patty said I was just saying you know when you ask a question like that there are other spirits besides the the Holy Spirit here I, I yeah. thought I understood that question yep amen in fact demons are spirits yes I mentioned that as well earlier yeah yeah absolutely I think we've covered it uh, as far as a who but I want to just make sure there is another who in here um, we, yeah, I we, got that. Okay, Can I you, hear that? What was it that you said? I just want to make sure. Uh, well, we got the word both, and that, there's two different feelings on the word both from what I can see. I have from written a long time ago in my Bible, Jew mm -hmm. and Gentile, but as I was looking at closer, I believe that it goes back to verse 17 and also verse 13. And then it, it's those that are near and those that are far. Now, in I, Isaiah, I looked at it also, and in Isaiah, if I can continue just for a second. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Isaiah uh, chapter 57, verse uh, 19, uh, alludes to Jew and Gentile in the Amplified. But I believe it's more um, true to be those near and those far off, both of those. I, I agree. So I would actually put it as we both rather than just both. Yes, yes, that's true. Anyone else have any thoughts here as it relates to who? You know, don't and you I like think... that thought, though, that if you're far off or if you're near, you can still have access. You can still have admission. You can still uh, have that through idea of the pipe. Amen. Amen. Kyle? And I kind of have, like, this feeling that, like, becoming of one spirit is, like, a quality trait that comes from the spirit. So it's like something that he puts in us and it comes out of us by being connected to him. Like, cause unity comes from the Lord and like his, it's a quality, a trait that comes through us from God type Amen. thing. Exactly. It's like a, a virtue, a virtue. 
Amen. You know, I just yeah, had a, uh, I, I had a, uh, um, a thought process that came through my mind. Um, you know, in, in this call, uh, we've got what, uh, three, six, nine, 10, 12, 13 people on this call. The only way that we can have a successful call with that many people is if we are working in unity and we are we are respecting each other if we start talking over one another like i've I, I you know we've noticed a little bit today we respect we back off and we wait for uh, the the process and and that's that's a example of what it, the unity of the spirit the unity of the body of godhead no one person is trying to take over the call but instead we're working together in love and and working with each other that's what I, that's, that's unity in motion. Mm -hmm. oh, All right. Okay. Um, I was just going to read one verse that uh, I, I kind of encourage people if they really want to know, you know, what Christ was going to send after he left is to read mm -hmm. uh, John 14, 15, and 16, uh, those three chapters. But verse uh, 13 of the 16th chapter, it says, how be it? When he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So, you know, just going back to the words of Christ in, in John 14 and 15 and 16, those three chapters, Christ did a lot to explain to the disciples uh how he was going to come to them he says i will not leave you comfortless i will come to you so it kind of opens up that there is a third person of the godhead and that it has a particular purpose and it does say he doesn't speak of himself he speaks what the father and the son tell him to tell us amen 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 all right let's go on to who what what is next what is next? What do we have for what? Access. Absolutely. Absolutely. I I put it down as have access, but access is is the is the root of it. That we might have access. If it would not have been for what Jesus did, who on this call here would have access? Nobody. None of us. Can I change None that? Yeah, go ahead, Mark. Can I change that wording just a little bit? What he is still currently doing as well? Oh, amen. Amen. Thank you. You're right. 100%. 100%. If he wasn't still currently doing now, we'd all be in a spot of trouble. But we know because of what he is doing, actively, presently, purposely, now, we all have the same hope no matter what happens. Okay, so where? I was just gonna make a quick comment on that uh, sure. access. Yeah. Uh-huh, go ahead. So, so this access to the Father is something that we all must have, we all need in order to, to um, be in a right relationship with God in order to have life. And, and, and we could expound on that in many ways. Yet that is also the very thing that, that we were taught from the Garden of Eden in you know Genesis chapter three, that that's what we don't want. And so that's part of the controversy there. Do we really want access to God or no? Mm -hmm. True. And, and so it's it's giving us this verse is pointing out that we we have that we have that option, and we can we can use it. We can get to the God. We can we can enter into His presence through Christ, and that is that is an awesome opportunity. Amen. Amen. That's an exciting opportunity. That's yeah. And 
Absolutely. And he's also wow. saying like he's saying like one spirit unto the Father. Is he re referring as in because like the Father ha he's having like we have access to the same spirit that the Father has. Because Jesus only ever did and said whatever he's seen and heard the Father doing and saying. And he says, I would have it that you would be one with me as I am one with the Father, and that the Father would be one with you. That's right. I, absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. All right, let's go to aware. What do we got for where, guys? Unto yes. the Father. I can see. I can definitely see that as aware because that's that's the end destination. Um, so I definitely see that. That's not what I wrote down though. Anyone else have any other thought? I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> okay, fair enough, Michelle. Through Jesus Christ. So where it's going through Jesus Christ, where is the end result? Unto the Father. It's kind of like a tunnel. Uh, it's a poor analogy in some ways. But Jesus Christ is the tunnel. But once you get to the other side of the tunnel, you're where the Father is. That that analogy can break down in some really big, really big ways really quickly, but it's um, at least a little bit going in the right direction. Well, you know, though, really, I don't think you can put them on either side of the tunnel because they're one. Absolutely. Even Definitely. though, even. E even though Jesus does say, you know, the way to the Father is through me, there's still one. So I don't see it as one being on either side of the tunnel. I see it as being one, more uh, more like a prayer going up than a tunnel going through. So how are they one? Oh, well, John 17 talks about how they're one, same way right. we're supposed to be one. Right. So how are they one? In Jesus' prayer, he asked that that we might be one as he and and the um as he is one and with the Father, so he'd be one with us and we would be one with each other. And I'm sorry, I don't have a reference for that, but when he was praying for his disciples and essentially us in, in that context. Does that mean I'm Mark? No. How? What? What does this one mean? Me. Let's talk about it. Character. Amen. Unity. Amen. Spirit. Unity of character. Unity of heart. Unity of focus. That the is the spirit. one. There's also the oneness that we get from marriage, as we see in Genesis chapter two. Which means I'm Could Irene. Be. Right? No, of course not. Irene is my wife, and so we are married. We are joined. We are a unit. We are of one spirit. But I'll never be Irene, and she'll never be me. Yet at also, the same time, you can call up, call Kyle, you up. Kyle. Oh. Hang on a second, Mark. Hang on. Kyle? Also, if he's one with the Father, and we become one with Christ by grace through faith, then the just like a wife would then have another father, she would be a father father in love, you mm. would inherit the lineage of your husband. So okay. we the bride and so we are inheriting the oneness and access to the father, the image and likeness with the same spirit of love. That he is. That's right. Go ahead, Mark. Oh, I was just 
building on what you were saying, you're not one with Irene in the same sense that you're not um, the same person, yet I can still call you on the phone or contact you in some way and, and ask you something that pertains to Irene, and you should be able to be in close enough contact with her to know what her wishes are or, or to be able to satisfy that question or whatever because um, because you're united in spirit. Amen. So I can I can get access to you. I've essentially accessed both of you in that kind of way. I agree. I definitely agree with that. Let me uh, bring one more thought process here as it relates to oneness. It's a, it's a beautiful thought in my opinion. Jesus has been, if we look at, um, I think it is in Galatians, where it says that he has, he is being, he is the heir of what the Father has, and we are joint heirs with Jesus. I can't even imagine being at that, uh, being able to have access at that level. That is just incredible to me. How in the world can I have be joint heirs with the Son of God. And it just blows my mind. Um, but praise God, that is what we are promised, is joint heirs with Jesus. Uh, John 17, 21, I believe is the scripture verse. Well, the one I'm thinking about is in Galatians, but what does John 17, 21 say, Kyle? Uh, that all of them may be one Father. Just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. That is definitely one of them. Um, but the one I am was thinking of is actually Romans 8.17. Somebody want to read Romans 8.17 for me? Somebody that hasn't uh, been talking. Uh, Sharon, can you read Romans 8.17 for me? Or how about Rosie? Rosie, can you read Romans 8.17? Oh, okay, no audio, got it. Rosie, how about you? Yes, I could read it. Hang on. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Where did it go? <laughs> oh, my God. You got that, Rosie? Okay, I've got it. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Amen. 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 All right, so let's see. We are on a why. Are we on why, who, what, where, why? We're on why, I think. Why? So we can have access to the Father. Absolutely. What, what a, a, a lot of people sometimes think, uh, well, I don't know what the will of the Father, what the, what the will of God is. The will of God is for us to be restored. The will of God is for us to be home. The will of God is for this whole thing to be over and life truly beginning. I think the will of God is to give our will to him. Oh, amen. I totally get you. Yeah, that's in uh, because... Philippians. I got to put you on uh, mute because I'm driving here. Okay, sounds good, Twyla. Anything else here on the why? Well, I see the for through him as being part of the why this access is. 
it's given us. I could see that as a why. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> Somebody needs to be put on mute. All right, what about when? This is when I need you, Twyla, because you, you, you nail these ones all the time. What about a win, guys? Well, what I wrote now. down was, what's that? Uh, now, currently, click a current. I, I don't see a I don't see a na the word now in there, but what word is in there that would fit that? You're, you're right on the right track. Have is a present tense term. Exactly, term. have one hundred percent, and that just nails everything that Kyle just said one hundred percent. Anything else? All right, let's go down to a how. I would what say by know? one point. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, especially in the US, we've got such a divided country, more divided than ever before. Nothing can be accomplished by all the infighting. If we get to heaven and it's the same thing, it's not going to work so well. That's why we need to understand that the oneness that we're bringing together is a oneness that will be for now, and it's going to go into eternity. If we cannot enter into that oneness here, We'll never enter into it there. It starts now, but we are one spirit. But wait a minute. Mark disagreed with me, and I'm right. Therefore, was that the, was that the part of Jesus? Never. Jesus was always trying to be very otherly and whatnot. If we spent more time being otherly, uh, other focused and whatnot, we would we would be stumbling over each other trying to do good for each other instead of trying to grab back and hold and withhold because after all, it's mine. And we need to learn that. We need to learn that one spirit, that 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 common language. Because we need that, to have that access in unity of oneness, 100%. Anyone else? Well, the complete, complete unity that comes to God's people uh, will, you know, it's like with the early rain. There, they had to, in their minds, come into unity. But then the power that came with, you know, that came into that unity uh, was was the Holy Spirit coming on the day of Pentecost. So we look down here at our time now as we strive to come into unity. Uh, the latter reign with power is going to finish the job if we are sincerely working on that unity and working toward that. And character is built with by stern battles with self. So, yeah. you know, every time we see something, we just say, Lord, help me. I I'm I'm not there yet. Help me. And so we just it's a continued striving uh, for the to have the mind of Jesus, the character of Christ. And then when the latter rain is poured out, that will finish the job for those who are really striving for that. And it will give us power. Uh, the Amen. latter rain. Is power. Amen. You know <laughs> that I think that, that reminds me of something that I forget where we got it in my childhood. It was a poster and it just said, please be patient with me. God's not done yet. Amen. Anyone? I know there was somebody else that spoke. 
Yeah, I took myself off mute for a moment here. Um, you know, the thing that Patty said could be repeated over and over and over. It needs to be our prayer because that oneness in Acts is the oneness that Jesus talked about in John 17. It's the oneness that, that we need. It takes those that are afar off and that are near. It brings them into oneness if they if they let Jesus live in them. I just really liked what Patty said because that early rain and that latter rain and that power and that angel that comes with a loud cry, that power that God will will give through the Holy Spirit that he promised if he would leave, that then that power would, would come on us. He had to leave for that power to, to be available to us. And it's so important that we understand that needs to be in us. He needs to be in us. We had, need to have that mind of Christ. I just thank you so much, Patty, for that. For that little paragraph, those few sentences that you shared. Amen. Yes, the Lord is good. He He helps us. All right, I'm going to go ahead and enter actually, in. Go ahead. Actually, he does for us. If you Ow. take the message of Christ's righteousness, he does more than help us. He does for us because there's nothing we can do to get more of his grace. There's nothing we can do to get more of his love. He's given us everything. And when we accept his righteousness, <clears throat> that's, that's instead of ourselves. We can't help ourselves. You're right. He has to work in us mightily. Yes. Sharon had this to say, and I, I, we give you access to our hearts. You give us access to all you are. We, uh, you are. We give you access to our hearts. You give us access to all you are. Yeah. Amen. That's, that's where our power will come from. Amen. All right, let's step into commentary of encouragement. Okay, if we go a little bit long, guys. Yes. All right, I, I'm not getting anybody saying no. Uh, through who is the access? Ephesians 2.16. Somebody got that for me? John, you've got that one for me? John, do you have that or no? All right. So let's try Patty. You've got that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the 16th verse? Yes. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. And then John 14, 6. Somebody got that for me, Kyle? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and also the life. No one gets to the Father apart from me. In yesterday's write-up, we found that Jesus did this for anyone that would come to him. In our day, this means anyone can be saved. Back in the time when Paul wrote this, there were those that held Jews as being redeemable while Gentiles were not. 2 Corinthians 5.15. I forgot who the third caller is that we have here. I know there's John and there's Twyla. Who else is on a phone? I don't remember who the Kyle. third caller is. Oh, Kyle's on the phone. That's right. Okay. Boniface, <laughs> you've got uh, 2 Corinthians 5.15 for me. Yes, I have it. And that he died for all, 
that they live would not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. He died for 50% of humanity. Oh, right. Is that, is that what it said? He died for 50%? No. For whosoever. He died he died for those that would that, that were good. He died for all. He died for all. Amen. He died, he died for all. He died for those afar off and those near. Gee, why would you bring that up? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It is within this framework that we can understand the word one within today's verse. Here are a couple more verses that back up this oneness concept. John 10, 30. Let's see, uh, who's got that for me? John 10, 30. I got that. Okay, go ahead, Mark. I and my father are one. Close to being one of the shortest verses of the Bible, but not the shortest. Uh, John 14, 7. Michelle, you've got that for me? 14, 7. Correct. Yep. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. And then John 14, 11. Let's see. Who, uh, Bonnie, you've got John 14, 11? Oh, she what? stepped out. Oh, okay. Um, I got it. Go ahead. I have it. Okay. Um, I, I heard somebody say I have it. Uh, I have it. it. Go on. Well, whatever. Go ahead. All right. Hang on a second, Rosie. I'll get you the next one. John, go ahead. 1411. Believe me okay. that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Mm. Amen. Amen. This one, this oneness or inness transcends to all believers back then and today too. Rosie, uh, John fourteen twenty. <clears throat> okay, on that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. And then, so, let's see, John 17, 21 through 23. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Mark, you got John 17, uh, yeah, 21 through 23? That they, may all, excuse me, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the word may, world may believe that thou hast sent me. And you're wanting through verse 23. Verse 23, okay. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them, as thou hast loved me which culminates within this conclusive concept, Ephesians 4, 4 through 7. Patty, you have that? Okay, 4 through 7. 4, 4 through 7. Okay, there is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Then seven. Yes. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. The word that follows one of the eight ones above is quite interesting. The same word occurs in today's verse, one spirit. Often when we see the word spirit, we think Holy Spirit, though such reference is not always consistent with what is being said. Such is today's case. 
Ephesians 2, 13 through 18. Ephesians 2, 13 through 18. Um, yeah, I, don't know Jack, I could read that. Oh, you, you can do that? Okay, Twyla. Yeah, I just I just stopped here. Uh, Ephesians 2, 13 to 18. Do you want it in the Amplified or King James? King James, please. Okay. Uh, but now in Christ, ye who sometimes are far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, have abolished in his flesh the enmity, en want to say the enemy, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to <clears throat> make in himself one twain, of one twain, one new man, woo, of twain, one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. And came and preached peace to you, which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Thank you for that. I'm going to back up. You know, you, you, you stumbled there uh, where you said enmity and you almost said en enemy. I just want to make it yeah. clear. I want to make it clear. Christ never destroyed the enemy. Um, let me, and let's read Hebrews 2.14. Can somebody read Hebrews 2.14? Find it. Go ahead, Michelle, when you have it. Yeah. Hebrews 2.14. All right. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. So what is it that's destroyed? Sin. No. Yeah, well, yes. power. Huh? Power. The, the, power, the power of the devil. The, the power of what? Death. The power of death. The power of death, yes. Okay. That's what's destroyed. And, the, and how, how is that destroyed? By destroying the, the devil. devil. No. Jesus, be, Jesus became the curse, so we would be by set free from it. By Jesus doing what? Dying. I mean, by, in our heart. By Jesus, flesh and blood. He does too. Yes, Michelle. But Kyle, you're right. By Jesus dying, and the there's another piece to it because if Jesus died and that was the end of the story, we all are in deep doo doo. And he by rose. Jesus and rising from the grave. By Jesus the by destroying the de enemy's power, he destroyed the devil in that way. But he never touched the devil. Not in that way. If we look over, uh, I think it's in Jude, where it says, uh, not even Michael dared bring an accusation. Well, but you know... It, um, go ahead. I didn't want to interrupt. I can make a comment when you're done. Go ahead. Well, I was just thinking about the word blood in that, in that verse, um, that that's what we needed to be... Uh, that was, that was the remission of sin, the blood. But here's what's bothered me is that when you look at churches, they have the cross and the blood, and it's like, you know, there's more than just the blood on the cross. There's a rising from the cross. It almost makes me not want to see a cross because you can't, you can't just have that blood. You have to have the rising after that. That's you why to I took Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, because I've been doing the same thing. I'm having a hard time looking at crosses these days. I'm like, oh, my gee. Yeah. Yeah, I totally get you there, because if the cross, the cross was a capital, it's like putting elect, an electric chair at the focus. The cross mm -hmm. was a capital punishment tool. It was, it was a hideous capital punishment tool. Amen. The what what was what was and if the, everything had ended at the cross, 
if everything had ended at the cross, nothing would have been accomplished. Nothing. That's correct. That's other correct. than Jesus, the Son of God, dying. That's all. But because of the resurrection, and because he defeated death, and because he rose from the dead, we have life. Amen. 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 So when you so when you take the verse in uh, in uh, Galatians two twenty, as I'm recalling, I'm not looking at that right now. When you are crucified with Christ, that's okay. You can die with Christ, but you also have to live with Christ. So if Amen. you're baptized, if you believe if you believe in baptism by immersion, if you're just dying, if you're just going under the water, and you don't rise up. That's the same like just having the blood and not having that resurrection. Amen. 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 100% right. One going back to the oh, Go ahead, sorry. Mark. Going back to that same verse I was seeing that we are partakers of his flesh and blood and we see that as being what destroys the enemy that has the power of death and that makes me think of what is it that Jesus' death on the cross did that we partake in that destroys the enemy. As you mentioned, it didn't lay a hand on him, but it destroyed his power of death. That's right. That's right. I see that as his, his um, lies have been so um, proven wrong because God in his character has been justified before us. It is He has been shown who he is to the point where he's giving his very life to for us and we could say wow amen and we amen. we can partake of that and become the same ourselves that's right amen amen the one spirit referenced here is the spirit of christ himself rather than the holy spirit it should be pointed out that Christ's spirit, without question, is holy. However, within this concept, Christ himself is our mediator. 1 Timothy 2.5. Who's got that for me? Um, Bonifat. 2 Timothy 2.5. 1 Timothy 2.5. First or second? First. So I read it from King James Version. Okay. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ Jesus. Amen. It is by the holy and righteous acts of this one mediator that those who choose him, for he has chosen all, including you. John 3, 16, 17. Rosie, you, you've got that for me? John 3, 16, 17. I was wondering, um, Guy, could she read that from the Amplified? Because we kind of know what 3, 16 is, but I'd like to hear it from the Amplified if that would be okay. Okay, let's do that. All right, hold on. John 3.16. And 17. Okay. Okay. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave up his only begotten unique son so that whoever believes in and trust and clings to, relies on him, shall not perish, 
come to destruction, be lost, but have eternal, everlasting life. For God did not send the Son into the world in order to judge, to reject, to condemn, to pass sentence on the world, but that he, the world might find salvation and be made safe and sound to men. Amen. Amen. Only, only begotten, unique son. That's super cool. Which is the very reason these were his final words while living as a man on earth. Uh, Luke 23, 34. Um, who hasn't read for a while? Um, John, Luke 23, 34. Okay. 22, 23, 34. I'm almost there. Take your time. And said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. You have to remember, this is when he's being crucified. I don't know if I was being crucified if I would have that same love for others at that exact moment, you know? <laughs> or the presence of mind to even consider it. Right, exactly. And yet he was always fully giving. Let's close with Romans 6.5. So who's got Romans 6.5 for me? Michelle? I'm looking for it. Yeah. Oh, right. ah. Romans 6 5. Romans, one of my new favorite books. All right, 6 5. Here we go. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Didn't we talk about that just a minute ago? Yep. As it relates to, you know, if we're going to take on the blood, we've also got to take on the resurrection. This is, these verses are super cool. Super cool for us to just hang on to during this time. You know, like I said, when I started this call, um, the days ahead may include death for some of us. And some of us may, may die murders, but brothers and sisters, we will be in the likeness of his resurrection and that we can take to the prover proverbial bank of heaven. We have that <laughs> as our assurance and we have to hold on to that because we, 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 we know this is all getting crazy, but we also know we serve King Jesus and no matter how crazy it gets, he will take us through. Amen. All right. Who would like to close us in a word of prayer? Come on, guys. Who would like to close us in a word of prayer? I guess I will. Go ahead, Rosie. Okay. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to meet today. Thank you for your grace and your love. Without you, we would be nothing, Lord. Um, let us go about our day. Um, showing your love in all things that we do. Thank you for the time that we spend together to dig deeper into your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Here, let me go ahead and uh, turn this off here real quick.